Thank you, everyone. It's um, an absolute honour to be in a room with um, so many experts and so much expertise. Um, and thank you, Rosemary, Chris and Lean. I can't see Lean, but Forethought has absolutely enjoyed uh, being part of this project and we are very excited. We've got some other teammates in the room, so we're very excited to, to show it to you and, and, and tell you what we've done. Um, it's consumer um, way of, of thinking of the world of energy. So what we wanted to do basically, we wanted to understand first of all, what are consumers going through in their lives? How does then energy fit with whatever they do, whatever they're going through in their lives? And then um, really ask them, well, can it be better? Should it be better? What would better look like if you sit back and you're in charge? Well, you're probably not sitting back then if you're in charge, but if you, if you had an opportunity to change uh, from your point of view, what would you be doing? What are some of the things that need to happen to, to, to make energy use and energy management better for everyone? So just highlighting some, uh, lots of words on that page, but really highlighting what we set out to achieve and how we did it basically through in-depth conversations uh, with consumers. Sometimes they were on Zoom, which the, is the technology we love and we use a lot. Sometimes they were face-to-face. Uh, -face. We went to regional areas, went to many different states, and sometimes there were group conversations of about six to eight consumers together having a chat. Sometimes we use facilitators. When, when we talk to consumers about future, it's a difficult conversation. So we wanted to make sure that we've got the right material, we've got the right um, environment, if you like, to get them going and initiate that level of thinking so we can be sure that what they're telling us does make sense and it's coming um, directly from, from consumers and, and from their perspectives, which is uh, perhaps most important. So the methodology or the method we employed is something that we do quite a lot at Forethought um, and we use it in different industries, in different contexts and um, it is a life stage approach. If we want to understand or if you like map consumer's life journey, we want to make sure that we've covered all of the life stages that a typical consumer uh, may go through and we wanted to make sure that we can um, cover you know, early life, perhaps early adulthood, midlife, later in life um, perhaps. So what we've done is in that life stage approach, we've recruited from different ends of that life journey if you like. So you can have a look um, for yourselves what we wanted to cover in there. But the idea is to really talk to consumers about today, depending on what stage they were, looking into their lives in the future and then looking back. If we're talking to someone who is in midlife and talking to someone who is in uh, more mature stages of life, perhaps. So we wanted to speak to those ones who are studying, um, perhaps living at home or perhaps sharing a household under the age of 30, which is we've sort of classified more broadly as early. Uh, or leaving the nest, pardon me. Then we had early adulthood, so um, consumers under the age of 40, they could be defining themselves as early or mid-career, moving out of home perhaps, you know, at least five years ago, maybe having children and, and starting to grow family. Midlife, ages between 35 and 59, define themselves as mid or late career. Um, and might have children, if any, living at home at this point in time. More mature stages of life, we cover those consumers who are the age perhaps of 55 and above. Um, they could be retired fully or they could be semi-retired. They might, um, their, their kids, if they had any, they've left home. So in this um, madness of who we um, spoke to, we um, have arrived at the, uh, <laughs> the life stages transition journey, which you will have an opportunity to see very quickly, uh, which is um, quite complex in that and has a lot of detail. But it has come from these consumers, households, a total of 187 ladies and gentlemen, 187 conversations. We wanted to make sure that we have a mix of metro, regional, 
Uh, we wanted to make sure, as you saw, um, age was one of them, uh, gender, income. So some of what we can and cannot do what might, we, we know very well depends on our financial situation. So we wanted to make sure that we covered that. We wanted to make sure that we're able to detect any differences in opinions and attitudes for all those different, if you like, uh, pointers um, and, and, uh, and, and, and um, what describes our typical household consumer. So perhaps um, as you sit back and, and hear the presentation, we, we had three key messages for you. I mean, you are all experts and you all come from very different walks of life, from very different sectors, and that's absolutely amazing. But perhaps uh, one, one of the messages is open your mind. And sometimes what I present, you might think, oh, well, that's old news, that's not new to me. The key, the key here really is, is how do we differently think about what our households are going through in their life and how are then we placing wherever we come from in the context of what they're telling us? So open your mind. I think there are complexities as well as there are simplicities in something that you've heard before many times the, 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 it will give that unique perspective in some ways. And it might take a bit of time. You might sit back and think, well, I don't know how relevant this is to me, or no, but I'll just keep going the way I am, and which is cool, but it might take time. You might have a shower in a couple of days and say, oh, that was an interesting point that households were telling us. So please be open to that. Please be open to that unique perspective and look at it as an opportunity. I mean, we all have with Energy Consumers Team um, and, and, um, and, and there is a lot there that consumers have told us would make their lives easier, would make their use and management of energy a lot better. So we'll get to that. Everybody's having a conversation. I don't know how I fit in as an individual. If I was able to engage with somebody that's selling me a service already, one that I can't live without, that would make me feel like I can participate on a grassroots level to a much bigger problem. And the reason why I play this, this is coming from one of the consumers that we talk to, is that there is that opportunity really for us is highlighted in the fact that consumers and some consumers in particular are saying, where is my place at the table? Perhaps I don't have enough information. Perhaps I would like to have a say. And all of these important conversations around what I do today in my real life and how perhaps I impact the future are being had without me or without my interests at heart. So that was, um, and, and we'll play some of the other audios, if you like, as we work through the presentation, but that was, that was really relating to the opportunity that, that these insights present to the sector. So starting with today, we all know this, this won't be news to you, the consumers are um, very, very busy in their lives and they don't really sit back and think about energy. They, they kind of recognise its importance, but that, that it, it's not top of mind for them. And, and what it is, is really they're feeling a bit disinterested and they're feeling a lot frustrated, and you know this. Energy consumers have done a lot of research that highlights this. We're talking about prices, we're talking about complexity that really causes that frustration for a lot of our households. So, so in that world, um, they, in that business, if you like, consumers have their own priorities and challenges they need to deal with on an everyday basis. So they go through things and perhaps as we set out to uncover differences, perhaps we uncover that we have more in common than in than in difference, if you like. But one of the underlying thing um, or, or theme there is, is that energy does enable a lot of things that we do in our lives. So um, it's a very busy map. You'll get a copy of this map. But what it does is we've highlighted a number of things that we heard from consumers. You'll see in green are key life milestones, so consumers, what they're going through and what they've told us about. There is a block line, block white, which is where most of the consumers are on that sort of, if you like, life journey path. We have a um, dotted white line, which is an alternative life path on that map. 
And what's really interesting here, what we're doing is we're also mapping their views and their perceptions of energy use and management at different stages as they work through their life. And as you would have appreciated, people will be on that block white path, but sometimes they'll get off it. And we heard a lot of, a lot of stories, a lot of disruptors happening in consumers in household lives that makes them off the block line. It could be um, losing a job. It could be um, an illness. It could be um, not being able to have children. So, so we've depicted that as well. And we know that some of them will shift them off the path and will have some influence over how they go about doing things in their life and then also how then they are made to think about energy perhaps in different ways. So that's purple there. You'll be able to see that in a, in a lot more detail. But all we'll do next is go through each life stage. So we're starting off with leaving the nest. It's, it's generally, you know, for most consumers, as we say, we're looking for some of the things that unite a lot of our households. It's a fairly um, short-term thinking time. They're focusing on bettering themselves and understanding themselves, perhaps. They really want to enjoy life, whatever that means, whether that means studying, whether that means traveling. They're potentially looking for new jobs. And, and it's really, in, in, in some ways, perhaps a time where there is lesser responsibility than there is in some a later life stages. Um, but even so, households talked a lot about the challenge of balancing social work, because they're obviously social life, because they are going out a lot and they're not really uh, worrying about too many things. So they, they, they find that challenging. They find the challenge of having enough money to obviously be able to afford the lifestyle that they generally talk about and generally want. And then um, really that fact perhaps that some of them are becoming independent from their parents and some of them are really wanting to build the skills and confidence for their jobs, finding the first job and perhaps working out what the career path may look like. So nothing new there. Uh, but you'll see how perhaps this group thinks very differently about energy in a moment. I want to introduce all phases, life transitions, and then we'll talk about how they think about energy and how they use energy, depending on what they've told us, what their lives look like. Early adulthood becomes a time, perhaps, when we start to commit in all sorts of different ways. Our consumers have told us that at this point in time, they're committing, perhaps, they're committing to a partner or not, they're committing to a house or not, it, it, they're, they're sort of moving, definitely moving out of home, and they're starting to be a lot more responsible in their lives, a lot more responsible in their lives. So that then perhaps classifies some of the challenges that they've told us about taking on more responsibilities, paying all the bills that they get, balancing work and life, progressing in jobs starts to be really top of mind and starts to um, get into motion and get, get um, they, they, consumers are starting to sort of really think about that and where they're had it. So when they do come to midlife, midlife is a busy, 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 busy time of our household's lives. I don't know if I've emphasized that enough, but, but you can see the red, just in case I haven't said it enough, there is a red block line, means households talk a lot about not having enough time. The priorities are very different. They might have kids, so their focus is solely on kids. They might not have kids, but they have careers. Um, there are lots of things they engage in at this point in time. And, and really, the challenge is uh, managing all of that on a daily basis, managing the household and work, and, and um, finding really a bit of time for themselves, really just sitting back and, and perhaps reflecting becomes something that you would have done in all other stages of life, but perhaps you might have not appreciated it <laughs> until you actually came to midlife and, and realised how it actually can get so busy, busy. And mature households, perhaps starting to wind down in some ways. They, they might still be working. Um, 
they might be retiring, they might be half retired, they might be, you know, in some sort of consulting arrangements, but but they're, they're reflecting a lot at that stage of life. They have a lot more time. Perhaps if they had kids, kids have left home, there is a bit more of, um, of time to, to sit back and think a little bit about where they've been, what they've done, um, how they've gone about things, decisions they've made. Um, and so and the challenges here really become being financially secure. I think health starts to surface to the front of what this group of customers start to think a lot more about. It's about how do I make sure that I'm healthy, how do I make sure that I can you know, prolong my life and, and behave in a ways that will you know, make sure that I you know, um, can, can enjoy um, the, the whatever years are coming. And managing life expenses becomes a real challenge for these consumers at this point in time, because the resources are perhaps um, limited. So, they, perhaps energy is not top of mind, and we talked about that, but the way our households will think about energy will differ based on where they are at in their life, what stage they are at. So when we talk about consumers who are early on in life, remember they might be living at home, they're sort of not really engaging, they're not paying bills, so therefore their view of the world is very limited in that sense of the nitty gritty that we really care about. Where this group is interesting is in a way of ideals. So this group knows a bit more about environment, a bit more about climate, and that's perhaps a number of reasons, because they're here at school, they might be hearing it at university, they're accessing all sorts of different sources um, on, on, um, on the internet and listening to that conversation. They're perhaps a little bit unsure, what does that mean and how would I perhaps go about doing any of that or fixing any of these really big things that, that I'm, aware of, uh, I'm aware about. And perhaps in, in so many ways I support. Early adulthood, um, so, and, and, and this early life um, group of households or consumers if you like, they're out and about so they won't be much at home but they'll be using energy in all sorts of ways that perhaps we are today, mobile phones, uh, perhaps you know, computers, laptops, TV, streaming. So when the consumer comes to early adulthood stage, it's a stage, remember we said of commitment, of increasing responsibility, be that in, in bills, be that in mortgage, be that in relationships. Um, this consumer group starts to look at their energy bills and starts to think, oh my goodness, how did I not know how big these bills are and how am I going to be able to afford all of that? I have to work a lot harder. So their first that encounter becomes with energy bills, which are really high, and also this consumer group says, I don't really, I'm not sure what I'm paying for and I don't understand any of this. So that's perhaps at that point in life the first encounter with seeing energy bills and it's not positive as you would appreciate because it's high prices and no understanding. They are um, obviously using it in TV streaming, winding down, cooking, um, doing cleaning appliances at home and all sorts of different appliances, particularly weekends because this group is mostly out and about and at work. Midlife, um, typically very busy and not really paying too much attention at energy or any other bills and they're really feeling the pressure to be, um, um, to, to be able to, to pay all of their bills, not just energy bill. Um, they obviously um, might have kids and a lot of them talked about a difficulty in controlling that behaviour at home. Um, they talked a little bit about, um, um, you know, a different sort of um, perhaps philosophies that are happening at home, you know, them coming from their parents and them themselves and then their kids, again, have a very different view of the world. That'd be obviously TV and streaming, kids are, um, um, are using a whole heap of um, different um, technologies at home and then um, really heavy use of, of um, house appliances. Mature house, uh, household, 
uh, had more time to think a little bit more about energy and how that's being used. They're motivated by how do I make it better for myself or cheaper perhaps so I'm able to control my expenses. They're at home perhaps throughout the day. They're using all sorts of different devices at different points in, in the day. Um, And they also, what happens with this group, they carry, they've sort of trialled things in life before. They've sort of developed some ways of perhaps how things work or do not work. And they've sort of now gotten into some sort of gear. So on one hand, they're doing whatever they've done, whatever they've sort of trialled. And on the other hand, this group is really willing to do something different because they want to make sure that their bills are, um, um, are being tightened. So we talked a little bit about some of the consumers perhaps getting off that typical or common path that we observed with talking to 187 consumers. There will be very different people who are going through different life stages and experiences. And so we wanted to show you um, a couple of consumers that we met that have gone through um, a life we call it a disruptor, but something's happened in their lives and it's made them lead their life in a very different way. And, and, and that had a, um, a significant impact on how they go about their life, but they also how they think about energy. So Johan had a, an illness or a condition where his body couldn't be exposed to high temperatures. So he had to completely change the way how he was um, taking care of himself. So all of a sudden he had to use air conditioning quite a lot to make sure that he doesn't get the skin condition that he was getting. He also uh, needed to obviously spend a lot of energy on that, but also needed to make sure that he's able to maintain work. So a huge challenge for him and something that not a lot of other consumers that have, have not been pushed off the common path have needed to think about, but he has. He really needed to have that's to start to think about how he's using energy, whether he's able to afford it, whether he's able to work, and, and well, that sort of led maybe to him putting blinds down and starting to develop different ideas and different strategy of how, strategies of how he can save. On the other hand, Jennifer got divorced and it was le she was left with um, taking care of three children at different stages of their life. Kids were at different stages of their life, including babies. So um, as you would appreciate, I don't know if you remember the love transition, but it was, for most of us, in red. So it was very busy. And then um, imagine you've got three kids, you've got one income. And, and Jennifer was really having a difficulty, first of all, finding time to think about anything, including her three children, but let alone start to look at her expenses and bills and work out what is it that she can or she can't afford. We had even one, one, um, one lady in one of our groups saying that her daughter's also gone through a divorce and she was paying her energy bill because she had four kids. So, so, so our consumers experience these things on a daily basis and they're made to think very differently about how they go through life and, and also what is, how do they pay their bills, including energy bill. But what does that mean? I mean, in that sort of picks and throws of life and the chaos that our consumers are going through, the energy is sort of tick, tick box and it's enabler and it's just there and I don't have to think too much about it until the bill comes in. But what does that mean? What have they told us? They told us a number of things and they said that um, they, they wouldn't mind being engaged in the conversation but they didn't know how. So you, we, have, we have comments directly from consumers relating to some of these points. I think some consumers were telling us look, what is the benefit of me changing my life? How is it going to influence me in my everyday? How, what, how is it going to change my everyday? I'm not really entirely sure at all about what that means. And then they were saying, um, I don't really know if I change my behaviour, will, what, what, will everyone else do it? Or what, what kind of impact will that have on the society? What am I working for? What am I changing my behaviour for? There are a couple of things there, the themes that we're going to um, 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 
refer back again when we talk about future, but really um, sit back and have a think about that. So one, they're saying, not sure what this all means. I'm not sure if I change, what is the direct benefit to me, to my life today? And then what about everyone else? Will they be changing? What's the point mindset? I don't know, I've got too many things to worry about. I'm not sure what does that all mean for me. And, and what that means is that there is an opportunity to start to think about what it is that consumers are really telling us as a sector. What is it? Where can we make it easier? Where can we engage them? Where can we clarify? And how we can change their expectations based on what our services, based on our what product is, based on the broader uh, uh, conversation we are having. Because you know why? Because when we talk to consumers, what was really interesting when we talk to them about future, they're, 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 um, there is an aura of negativity. There is a bit of doom and gloom. Consumers are really worried. I think when, when, I, um, when I think about what they've told us and when I think about how we color coded what they're telling us, there was a lot of red and there was a bit of green in technology. Now, I know Dr. Hart is saying that's not the only thing, but our consumers are seeing that as a way of how we can start to make a change, start to have some impact on what they're telling us they need from the sector. And we'll have a look at that in a moment. Um, but what I wanted to talk you through is five key themes that have come from consumers that they literally mapped out on a piece of paper together with us. So one is not unusual to you. It's no news. You can sit back and relax. They want lower prices. It's one that's really top of mind that they, they're grappling with. They, they, they're saying both households and SMEs um, are saying this really needs to change in some ways. And you know what it is? It's perhaps the confusion of them not really knowing what they're paying for and how they can start to manage some of the prices because the consumers do want to get into that and, and manage uh, their energy use, whether it's through apps, whether it's through automation, uh, smart technology, anything that can start to help them get their head around and understand what does this all mean for me today in my house we're using TV for two hours. We're doing a dishwasher that has four stars for two hours today. So to wash everyone's clothes. We're doing, perhaps doing some uh, ironing, um, vacuum. What does that all mean? What if I did one hour of that? What am I saving? What am I doing? Can I switch off the lights? Can I switch everything off when everyone is at bed? 10 p.m., it all goes down. This is what consumers are telling us exactly in their words. They are perhaps, perhaps a surprise to some of us researchers, perhaps um, they talk a lot more about renewable than we might have even had in our minds. I mean, we, we go in with an open mind, but perhaps we thought, they're like, okay, well, consumers do know, but what is it that they know? They know the term and, and then what else around that? They're saying we should be going down that path. Renewables are a way of future. If we're gonna facilitate how we go about living lives, and we're going to facilitate the future for all of the future generations. That's the way to go. And something that we heard at the start, we're reverting back to that point. There are consumers who are telling us, even with renewable, I need more information. I need to get it. I need to actually understand what it actually means. If I invest today, X number of dollars, who else is investing and where are we going to get as a society, as a nation in 2030? They need more information. They, they, they really crave that empowerment because they might know something, but they don't certainly know the detail. So in, li in line with these elements on our future map, consumers were telling us specifically these five things, what would they mean in their life stage in terms of what would they need? So the first one, study, remember you ask 
at school or you're at university, you know idealistically it's probably not the right way to go about things. So schools need more information. I mean, schools constantly have information on plastic. They constantly have information on rubbish, but they don't really have information about how we are smarter about how we're using our energy. What are we doing? What we shouldn't be doing? Um, for those ones who are moving into shared household, there was a little bit of a pain point there and, 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 and whether I'm spending more or less than what my roommates are spending and how is that control and why would I be spending less if they're spending more? We're all anyway paying the same, so I'm not really happy about that. And, and they really wanted something that could start to control that. I don't want to be limited by inefficient appliances simply because I'm a renter. This is a really big issue, becomes a much larger conversation for SMEs, but it's something that consumers feel a little bit limited by. You know, I don't wanna, I'm not going to go about doing anything at all if I'm just renting this house. I think those ones who are committing, starting to commit to all sorts of different things, perhaps including buying a house, and, and committing to a mortgage, they have said it would be a really good idea to understand how efficient this household that I'm buying is. Can someone tell me what sort of investment's been done and what sort of investment could be done to make it even more efficient in the future and what would that outlay be? They're really starting to think in terms that are very uh, simplistic, perhaps nitty gritty, but really important. I'm buying this house. Is this an energy... Uh, friendly house? Why is it not? What can be done to make it an energy friendly house? It would be more uh, helpful to have more information on stars. Remember, it's not about whether it's a four star, whether it's a five star or five star. It, it's again about, well, what am I saving specifically? And it's perhaps not in megawatts and all of that sort of stuff, but it's about the pricing. It's about how's that, how's that benefit me today? What, four stars, five stars, what does that mean in real terms for me? I want energy providers to have cheaper plants. I think this becomes a theme. I want to be able to understand my bills and compare plans more easily. I want to choose sustainable sources of energy at the cheaper price. This is what they're telling us. This was, and so, some of these things might not necessarily be a very far future. They should really be things that are happening today. Wish my kids were more aware. Remember we're saying at school, we should be starting to delete those conversations. I wish my kids were more aware of their usage and I don't have to run around the house and start to switch everything off when everyone goes to bed. They're absolute, just, uh, you know, um, don't care. I want to be able to monitor my energy use in real time so that I can understand how much I'm spending and how I can change that behavior. I like the idea of technology to automate I want to understand how to impact my bills. It's all about, how, do I really understand it? How can I manage it? I can't manage it if I don't understand it. I can't get to step three if I'm not at step two. So how do um, households um, tell us, well, what needs to happen? So all of these ideas come to life. And there is a very interesting observation there that, that our consumers, our households are telling us they feel, they feel that there needs to be an overarching vision where we headed as a society, that government should really facilitate some of these conversations. We all need to do it together. Everyone is responsible. I also believe that the government could come together like a big think tank in order to get everyone safe so we have an alignment. They have the biggest responsibility, someone from Tassie, a 34-year-old. There are lots of comments on there. They're coming directly from our households on this particular theme, which we thought, again, was, was quite, a, um, a, quite a common theme across. Well, I think just the Australian government generally would, would have um, the greatest power to make change uh, on our making some progress towards change, but I don't think it's a priority. Yes, yeah, so some, some will be a little bit difficult to hear, but exactly the point that we just read before, it's just coming directly from consumers, they're directly saying it. Um, I think the government, I think the 
government needs to actually step up. You know, I think one of the things that frustrates me is that everything comes down to money. I find that frustrating because you can't put a price on on our future and the world. Honestly, I think the change will mainly come from the private sector. It's not what I think it should be. I think the government should do that. You know, I think the government should represent, do what's best for the country and for the people. Just highlighting in a bit more detail about what the consumers are saying about that sort of overarching vision. They also believe that energy companies have a role to play, particularly related to the fact that there, there needs to be more clarity. And, and perhaps transparency around that. A better relationship with my energy company would be for them to be competitive with other companies in the market rather than charging whatever they feel like charging me. I find it very convoluted and it's really hard to understand what the best deal is because they confuse you with user trades and other things on purpose. They need to be more transparent and do a proper breakdown. Someone from Victoria, a midlife. So it's almost like you sit, so what we're sensing and what Dr. Hardy talked about and, and, and Rosemary in an opening is I expect these um, parties to be leading the uh, charge on changing some of this, but I don't know if I really trust them. You sense that through some of the comments. So there is certainly that lack of trust. So. Who do you trust and where do you go? What are the, it certainly emphasizes the need that there needs to be, that the trust needs to be restored. Interestingly, going back to what we observed very early on in our presentation is that consumers, that, that, that they're recognizing that they had a role to play because they, they all needed to change behavior. They, they, they have that sort of features in their thinking and and um, and certainly in, in in our consumer pool we've got those consumers remember the red flat line across middle life well these guys have no time they're not gonna sit around and they, they're quite happy because they're so busy this is the key time of their life and, and they've got no no even time for themselves they're saying can you please make a change, tell me what I need to do, but with my interest at heart, and I, I don't have time for anything else. There is a group of consumers who are saying, we really need to be at the table, like you heard the comment at the very start. And, and this is what um, consumers are telling us. And so you would appreciate that some of the early life and some of the later life, when you've learned some of the things, would be an amazing group of consumers to start to pull in into some of these conversations to represent the interest of a broader consumer group. Because they would have experienced it, particularly mature audiences. They would have gone through it, they would have trialed, they would have failed, they would have trialed, they would have failed, and they've learned some stuff. I would like to think that the public, including myself, could, you know, vote or have say on something and something actually be done and happen. No, I'd like to say there's no point in me jumping up and down because I'm, I'm just going to drop in the ocean. Some of them are a bit shorter, but... Oh, I think I would like to have a say in it because uh, it would make a difference to my life, the cost of energy, and the death the lives of my family as well. Yeah, so the clear... So what we wanted to do with this... Um, snippets of uh, audios is to actually bring what consumers are saying to life and certainly they're all coming from different views but they're suggesting you know it, if I'm participating my interest will be at heart at whatever change happens and it is partly my role to change it happen it will be important for me it will be important for future generations I think consumers are recognizing that which is really really interesting So just bringing perhaps all of that together in, in a conversation that I think we'll, we'll be having throughout the day is um, what are consumer expectations for better future? I think some of these, as I said, will not be news to you, but 
will really hopefully start to make sense of why consumers are saying this because what they're going through is quite, in their lives in general, is quite complex anyway. So if we start to take that into account and take into account what they're telling us the future should, should look like, the better future should look like, we can put, start to put some of the value proposition, propositions out there that we can guide some of our future activity and initiatives with. You know, we, we, we are in this together. We need to, if I'm changing, you need to be changing, he needs to be changing, and they need to be changing to have that overall impact on the society. Do I understand today what does that mean for me? What's the benefit of me changing anything? Do I know specifically what will happen to my life? Some of these things we heard throughout the presentation, so it would be good to sit back, maybe, maybe take it all in, reflect, um, and, and it would be wonderful to, un to, to, to get a sense for how does that apply to whichever sort of part of the world you come from, to what you do in, in daily basis. So I think, I think we da would, that, that would be my last slide. So I think Chris wants to open to questions. Oh, yes, so I want to introduce Rachel, who's from Forthood, our GM of engagement. She wants to talk to you about the activity. Yes, no? yes. yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh.